Well, hello everyone. This is a little short story written by me. It's not exactly original. I've stolen concepts and writing styles left, right and centre. But it's something I've been thinking about for a little while and it seems to be right for the Halloween day. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Fishes in the Sky. I was five years old when I first saw the fishes swimming in the sky. I'd been playing in the forest all day and had only realised it was late when the sun was starting to set. Man, was I in trouble. It had been a long summer holiday and my mother was at her limit and promising dire punishments if I played up more. So I cut through the cornfield instead of going around and caught my foot in a rut and went down hard. The pain was terrible and my ankle was swollen and hurt too much to put weight on. I tried crawling home. You'll be in trouble until Christmas, young man, if you play up again. But, well, I think I passed out for a bit of time. The next thing I remember was waking up, dark, cold, damp, sweating. It was a clear night, and the waxing moon was high in the sky, giving just enough light for me to see the wheels about me, and little else. After giving it some thought, I did the only sensible thing. I started to cry. But after a while, and realising to my shock that this was not helping, I finally started paying attention to the world around me, and that was when I realised there was something glowing near my feet. It was a fish. Well, well, mostly. It looked like a fish would look like if fish ate tigers. Flat, stocky, slow-moving, covered in scales that made it look armoured. And when it opened its mouth, rows after rows of needle-sharp teeth, for a moment I thought it was about to attack, and, indeed, after a moment it darted forward, only to swim right through me, spinning around, and giving a little whim, uh, okay, scream of pain, I saw all the others. The air above the field was covered in flowing lights, small ones darting around sharply and suddenly, sometimes alone, sometimes in shoals that must have numbered hundreds if not thousands, and larger ones, some the size of dogs, some the size of cows, all were swimming around in the air. As some came close to me, I could see the spectral outlines of fish in the glow. And what fish! You would certainly not want them served up under the plate of chips. In fact, I thought I recognised some of them from a book I'd read recently of dinosaurs. Well, when I say read, I really meant looked at the pictures, but that was the important bit right now. I remember watching them, fascinated. Then... Then nothing. Then waking up being carried by a somewhat grumpy policeman to the road. Of course, nobody believed me when I told them my tale. It was twelve years later when I saw them again. I'd been told I was hallucinating, or worse, making up stories, when I tried to tell people what I'd seen. And, of course, I was banned from going anywhere near that field again. So over the years, I eventually convinced myself that it was a story a fantasy made up by my fevered mind to pass the time. Back then, you see, rural landlords had a slightly more relaxed attitude to legal drinking ages than they do now. Provided you didn't do something stupid, they would happily take your money, provided you looked like you might need to wear a bra, or shave at least once a month. Of course, getting drunk and trying to arrange my 18th birthday party at my local meant we had to walk much further to the pub in the forest rather than go just round the corner. So my friend Robert and I started telling spooky stories to each other to pass the time as we walked along the pitch-black rural road back to the village. Running out of ideas, one night I told him about my fantasies as a boy. The beer I had drunk talked to the beer he had drunk, and together they convinced us that going to see that field seemed like a fantastic idea. So, tripping and stumbling, and occasionally stopping to water a tree, we had drunk a lot, we made our way through the pitch-black forest to the field I remembered so well, but had not visited for so long. When we got there, we sat and waited, and then, well, we fell asleep. The next thing I remember is being roughly shaken awake, followed quickly by feeling really cold. Blinking, barely conscious, I grumbled something incomprehensible only to be shushed by Robert. Quick, open your eyes and look around, he said. Ugh, why? I wittily retorted. The fishes! The fishes, they're real! Eh? The fishes! Will you open your damn eyes and look, you git? Finally, 
I did. And there they were in all their grotesque glory. As I looked around, a creature the size of an aeroplane, well, the size an aeroplane would be if it had flippers and not wings, glided gracefully overhead, turning its long neck to snap at one of the ghost fishes as it swam nearby. I turned to Robert to see him hastily tearing off his clothes. What the hell are you doing? I asked, slightly fearful of the answer. I'm going to swim with them. Yeah, I was right. Before I could reach out to grab him, Robert, and his beer, jumped into the air with a yell. I dived forward to grab him, but ended up passing right through him. Crashing down to the ground, I rolled over to see the spectral figure of my childhood friend swimming upwards towards the distant surface. My life for the next few months was hell. At first, everyone was convinced that I'd done something to him. I was even arrested and questioned for a while. When did you see him last? Did you argue? Was he upset about something? What do you know about his clothes being found in the field? Was he your lover? Did you kill him? What are you hiding? But in the end, my story held. I'd parted with him at the usual place and went home, and I had no idea what happened. But finally I was released, and I was allowed to mourn my friend. As the years passed, I started to get a glimmering of what happened to Robert. My future was changed by that event. I went to university instead of taking an apprenticeship, studied physics and philosophy instead of mechanics. In speaking to learned people, I eventually started to gain an understanding of what might have happened. People imagine the passing of time as turning of the pages of a book. It's a poor description, but it works. Imagine now that two completely separate pages got stuck together and on certain nights when some cosmic clock's hands pointed to the right numbers, things on one page could be seen on the other. Imagine still being able to jump from one page to another. I'm much older now, and the field this all happened in belongs to me. Over the years, I've introduced a carefully selected group of bright, imaginative people to this field and shown them the fishes. A wooden tower stands now where the wheat once was, and tonight we intend to cross the barrier between what is and what was. Take hope, Robert. I'm coming. I'm coming to find you, my friend.